Hi everyone, my name is Michael and I will be talking about Drupal, a powerful open source content management framework. So what is Drupal? It's a free open source web content management framework. It's similar to um, technologies like WordPress or Joomla, but typically preferred if you want something that's very extendable and you can get as complicated as you want. Um, like most CMSs, it's written in PHP. Drupal specifically uses the Twig templating engine. Pretty much everything is stored in the database as attributes and fields and content, and then that's just pushed to the front end and imported into the template using Twig. Um, typically, it runs on your LAMP stack, so Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, um, meaning it can be hosted pretty much anywhere. Um, it's very modular, flexible, and scalable. You can go from a small site that you made just for yourself to something like teslamotors.com. So where did Drupal all start? It was started in 2000 by a guy named Dries, whose surname I can't pronounce. Um, he wanted to build a small local news site with a web board so that him and his friends could communicate with each other. <clears throat> After he left university, they took this local site online so that they could still keep in touch among him and his friends. When Dries went to register the domain, he wanted to call it dorp.org, the Dutch word for town. But when he was typing in, he mistyped it and he put drop.org instead, and that's how it became hosted. The mistake stuck and the name was kept as the site became more and more popular and it attracted a wider audience where people could talk about web development and how you could extend web development since these were still early days. <clears throat> In 2001, Dries decided to release the software behind drop.org. He named the software Drupal, which is an anglicism of the Dutch word Drupal, meaning drop. Again, coming from drop.org. Years later, um, Dries and a guy named Jay Batson started the company Acquia to provide enterprise products, services, and technical support for Drupal. Now, when Acquia started, it had a list of investors that included Amazon and New Enterprise Associates, showing the potential behind enterprise hosting software for Drupal. Um, the company took off and it was valued at $1 billion in 2019 when Vista Equity Partners bought a controlling stake in the company, which is pretty impressive given that it's just open source software that some guy made during university. Yeah, so Drupal today. Um, you can see the initial releases of Drupal. Uh, it started quite quick with rapid updates. And as we got to Drupal 4, 5, 6, 7, they started becoming a bit more spread out. Um, Drupal 7 is actually still being supported. It's end of life is still a while away, but it's highly encouraged to update to Drupal 8 since from Drupal 8 onwards, there's far simpler upgrading. Um, it used to be pretty much a migration from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, but from Drupal 8 and onwards, so Drupal 8 to 9, it's pretty much just an update. Drupal 9 brought even more useful features. It fixed a, a few bugs and made content editing and management even simpler than it already was. It's often called a cleanup of Drupal 8. Drupal is one of the most popular content management frameworks of today, and there are over a million sites using it worldwide. So what's nice about that is this comes with a large and active community with a lot of history and support. So there's a lot of issues and very active forums where you can get help. There are many useful core modules that are shipped with Drupal, but it can also be extended to do almost anything that you want and anything that you can think of. If you can't find exactly what you want already hosted on the Drupal module site, you can just build it yourself. There's also many available themes that are already on the website, on the, the drupal.org website, but you can extend this yourself and you can even contribute to this large community. So some of the core Drupal features, there's way too many to get into, and this isn't meant to be a marketing campaign. So Drupal has enterprise level security, which is assisted by the vast open source community, and it provides extensive security reports. Um, absolutely all the modules that are uploaded to Drupal.org um, are checked against the Drupal security policies, so you, you know you have certainty which modules have been vetted and which ones are safe to use. Um, for example, the, the White House website and the US government's website are both Drupal sites which is just a testament to the security level that Drupal provides. Drupal is also very expandable and customizable and allows for integration with many third party services and technologies. You can use Drupal as a decoupled architecture and build front end frameworks, um, build using front end frameworks such as React or Angular. As mentioned earlier, there's a huge Drupal community, which means support for issues and frequent patches for most contributed modules. 
Um, search engine optimization is also a simple ad and can be set up when creating new content for your website and new pages. Speed is another term that is synonymous with Drupal um, and page loading efficiency is very high due to the use of advanced caching optimization modules. Some more Drupal features include mobile first. Um, Drupal, supports, Drupal supports a responsive design, best practices, and ensures your users get seamless content experience every time on every device. Um, content authoring is very simple in Drupal. You can use what you see as what you get or WYSIWYG editors, and content can also be edited from the front end at any time, which is pretty cool. Another thing Drupal offers is multi-site. So you can deploy multiple sites that use the same code base and the same themes, and then you can also override that in individual sites if you want specific modules only available on specific sites and specific themes and so on. Um, another really cool feature about Drupal is that it comes with multilingual support pretty much out of the box. So you can set up your site to automatically translate from English to a whole bunch of languages, and you can also override these um, translations if they aren't fit enough for you. And when comparing Drupal to something like WordPress, Drupal is usually preferred for anything that isn't a blog website. Um, if you want something like a plugin for WordPress, you have to pay for it, so it's not completely free. Whereas with Drupal, the, everything is free unless you go for enterprise hosting solutions. Just a, a list of some of the Drupal sites that you might know of. Um, Princess Cruises, Pfizer, the Grammys, NBC, Tesla Motors, Red Hat, and The Economist, just to name a few. Um, lots of universities use Drupal as well. Pretty much anyone who wants to have content managed by content managers. Now I'll go to a live demo. So this is Drupal.org. Uh, this is just taking a look at the modules. As you can see, there's over 47,000 modules currently available. Um, most of them are kept up to date and you can see when the last commit was, see what the patches are, uh, what the current open issues are, all of that kind of thing. And what's really cool is when you install Drupal, you can choose to just see how it works um, and install a demo site. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So this is the Umami Food Magazine demo site, just to give you an overview of what Drupal can do and what it looks like. This is obviously all almost vanilla Drupal, just set up with all this content for a fictional food magazine. Um, I'll show you some of the cool things that you can do with extending. So installing new modules into the site is as simple as simply installing from a URL or uploading an archive that you've made or one that you downloaded. So one that's quite cool is this admin toolbar that allows you to hover over them instead of having to click them. You literally just come down, copy the link, uh, install the new module, and install. Very simple, very easy to use, obviously, focused for like content creators. But what's really nice is if you're a developer, you can customize pretty much everything um, that you want. So I'm just going to turn it on to make the rest of the demo a bit easier. Hopefully the demo guards are on my side today. So going back to the home page, yeah. So it's just a much easier way to use the site. So you can see um, all of the different content you can add. You can come and see what the current content is. Um, one thing that's really cool is there's inline editing from the front end. So you can come in, if you don't like the specific um, heading, you can change it literally on the fly and it'll update it for you, which is really, really cool. You save it and it updates in the front and the back, obviously. It updates the, the database accordingly. If you come, you can look at your, your managed content. Uh, it's very easy to create new content. All of this can be set up yourself if you want to make a specific recipe. So you can make structure, content types, add a content type. You can come into this recipe and choose exactly what kind of forms you want, uh, what fields you want on the form. You can choose how it's actually displayed to your content editors on the front end. Um, Lots of dragging and dropping to move fields around. And what's what's also quite cool is with these content types, you can have different display modes. So instead of just having one way that the content is always displayed, you can have a default way, a card way. Um, so for example, if you want to scroll to the top and look at all the recipes, it shows you a little preview card and you can choose exactly how these things are displayed. Um, yeah, if you just look at the card, 
only the difficulty in the media image are shown as an example. And then when you click view, it'll take you to the full page and show you everything that it has to offer. I think that's about it.